welcome back to my channel. I am here with my book of the month haul because I have no self-control. I feel like I need to start starting all of my videos with that. Do I have like approximately 20 books from book of the month that I haven't read yet? Yes. Am I still going to buy multiple every month? Yes. Because I'm so tempted. I want to read all the things. I am like this close to finishing the Avatar series and then I'm going to get back into my book of the month books and hopefully like blow through some of the thrillers pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I'm also going to try one of my goals uh, for 2023 was to like actually not finish books that I don't love. Um, like if I just like need to know, I can look it up online. Like I don't have to spend so much of my time reading things that I don't love. So we'll see if any of those happen. Y'all will hear at the end of the year, I'll do a what I read um, the video. I don't know why I couldn't think of that word. But I'm here with five more books. First of all, the bookmark this time was Here's to 100 Months of Best New Books. So I think this is like their 100th hundred, month of like being book of the month. So that's cute. Um, a couple of these, okay, I think these three were like actually May picks and then these two were April picks or add-ons that I heard things about. So I heard a lot of people talk about this book. So it's Adelaide by Gene Genevieve Wheeler. And so it says, for 26-year-old Adelaide Williams, an American living in dreamy London meeting, Rory Hughes was like a lightning bolt out of the blue. This charming Englishman was the one she was looking for. Is it enough? Does he respond to texts, honor his commitments, make advanced plans, sometimes, rarely, and no, not at all. But when he shines his light on her, the world makes sense, and Adelaide is convinced that in his heart, he's fallen just as deeply as she has. Then, when Rory is rocked by an unexpected tragedy, Adelaide does everything in her power to hold him together, even if it means losing herself in the process. When love asks too much of us, how do we find our strength to put ourselves first? With unflinching honesty and heart, this a uh, relatable debut from a fresh new voice explores grief and mental health while capturing the timeless nature of what it is like to be young and in love with your friends, with your city, and with a person you cannot, will not love you back. So the reason I got this is I'm in like this book of the month Facebook group and everybody was raving about this book. And I feel like I rarely see people be like talking positively about the romances. <laughs> uh, I'm just not like a huge romance person. I like on occasion I'm here for it, but it's just not like my fave. But people were like raving about this so i figured i needed to give it a shot and it looks like fairly short so we'll see i will report back it does have a super cute cover also okay this was like an april add-on right it's a young adult fantasy book and i got this because kirsten like a fantasy wax kirsten on youtube um said that she loved this and so this i don't like i almost never buy fantasy books unless somebody that I feel like I have similar taste to raves about it and she really liked this so I was like mm, I've liked a lot of things that she's also liked so maybe so this is when two young rival journalists find love through a magical connection they must face the depths of hell and a war between gods to seal their fate forever after centuries of sleep the gods are warring again but 18 year old Iris Winnow just wants to hold her family together her mother is suffering from addiction. Her brother is missing from the front lines. Her best bet is to win the columnist promotion at the Oath Gazette. To combat her worries, Iris writes letters to her brother and slips them beneath her wardrobe door, where they vanish into the hands of Roman Kit, her cold, handsome rival at the paper. When he anonymously writes Iris back, the two of them form a connection that will follow Iris all the way to the front lines of battle for her brother, the fate of mankind, and love. Divine Rivals is an epic enemies to lovers fantasy novel filled with hope and heartbreak an unparalleled power of love so we'll see so basically like during the month if i see multiple people or somebody i really trust say they love something i will go ahead and add it to my cart and then whenever i go to pick mine the next month they're there so those two were that and then these three were picks that i just like i needed <laughs> because i can't can stop myself okay the first is the collected regrets of clover and i've already been seeing people rave about this one as well and this is by M miki brammer apologies if i'm pronouncing these things wrong um this is a super cute cover as well i just like flowers so this is what's the point of giving someone a beautiful death if you can't give yourself a beautiful life from the day she watched her kindergarten teacher drop dead during a dramatic telling of peter rabbit Clover Brooks has felt a strong, stronger connection with the dying than she has with the living. 
After the beloved grandfather who raised her dies alone while she is traveling, Clover becomes a death doula in New York City, dedicating her life to ushering people peacefully through their end-of-life process. Clover spends so much time with the dying that she has no life of her own. Until the final wishes of a feisty old woman send Clover on a road trip across the country to uncover a forgotten love story and perhaps her own happy ending. As she finds herself struggling to navigate the uncharted waters of romance and friendship, Clover is forced to examine what she really wants and whether she'll have the courage to go after it. Probing, clever, and hopeful, the collected regrets of Clover turns into a normally taboo subject of death into a reason to celebrate life. I thought that was super interesting. Uh, death doulas are like, it's like a fascinating career to me, it sounds. Just like, I have a really uh, like draining, emotionally job, and it sounds even more so than that. Um, so I'm really interested to read this and see what that's about. So, needed that. This is The Half Moon by Mary Beth. Kian, Kian, uh, from the best-selling author of Ask Again, Yes, a masterful novel about a couple in a small town who must navigate the complexities of marriage, family, and longing. Malcolm Jephart, handsome and gregarious longtime bartender at the Half Moon, has always dreamed of owning a bar. When his boss finally retires, Malcolm stretches to buy the place. He sees unquantifiable magic and potential in the Half Moon and hopes to transform it into a bigger success but struggles to stay afloat. His smart and confident wife, Jess, has devoted herself to her law career. After years of trying for a baby, she is facing the idea that motherhood may not be in the cards for her. Like Malcolm, she feels her youth beginning to slip away and wonders how to reshape her future. Award-winning author Mary Beth Kean's new novel takes place over the course of one week when Malcolm learns sharky news about Jess, a patron of the bar goes missing, and a blizzard hits the town of Gillum. Training trapping everyone in place with a deft eye and generous spirit kian explores the disappointments and unexpected consolations of midlife that many forms forgiveness can take the complicated intimacy of small town living and what it means to be a family um so this sounds like an interesting um like people having to force themselves to forgive each other and come together so ooh, thought that was also interesting and then lastly the thriller of the month is the last word. I almost always get the thriller because I, I like blow through thrillers pretty quickly and I enjoy it. And this is by Taylor Adams. I've seen like mixed reviews on this so far, so we'll see. This says, after posting a negative book review, a woman living in a remote location begins to wonder if the author is a little touchy or very, very dangerous. In this pulse-pounding novel of psychological suspense and terror from the critically acclaimed author of No Exit and Hairpin Bridge. Emma Carpenter is living in isolation with her golden retriever, Laka, house-sitting an old beachfront home on the rainy Washington coast. Her only human contact is with her... I never have, know how to say this word, and I have a PhD. Enigmatic elderly neighbor, Deke, and via text with the house and her jewels. One day, she reads a poorly written but gruesome horror novel by the author... H.G. Kane and posts one star review that drags her into an online argument with none other than the author himself. Soon after, disturbing incidents started to occur at night. To Emma, this can't just be a coincidence. It was strange enough that the, for the author to bicker with her online. Gosh, I've read too many words out loud in a row. <laughs> Could he be stalking her too? As Emma digs into Kane's life and work, she learns he has published 16 other novels, all similarly sadistic tales of stalking and murder. But who is he? How did he find her, and what else is he capable of? Displaying his trademark command of rapid-fire pacing, unnerving atmosphere, and razor-sharp characterization, Taylor Adams once again delivers a diabolically disturbing and deadly game of cat and mouse. Fascinating. So, these are my five books. Um, even though book of the month would imply one, and then I think most people get one to two. Um, yeah. Someday, maybe I'll catch up to reading all of them. Let me know if you got any of these and if you've read them, how many stars would you give them out of five? Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to leave my book of the month link in the description below. It's always down there. If you use that, you get a percentage off. It varies a little bit each month in time. Um, and I would get a free add-on book. Uh, so feel free to use that link if you're interested in trying book of the month. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. Subscribe and be good to yourself.